Hi, everybody. Please see my. How's everybody doing? I'm eating pistachio nuts. Ugh. That one wasn't very good. <laughs> so fast. That's cute. Hi Pete, how are you? I haven't seen you in ages. What time is it in Australia? Let's see, you're eight hours. Aren't you? Let's see, it's 10, 13. So it should be 8.13 Tuesday morning. Pete, is that correct? Are you still there? Oh, thank you. Hello, how are you doing? Can you see me? <clears throat> I'm hoarse, you'll have to excuse my voice. I've been hoarse for a while. So what's everybody up to? Is anything exciting going on TikTok Live right now? I was scrolling, looking at all the different TikTok Lives before I got on, and <clears throat> there were quite a few people on about every, of course, the ASMR. The ASMR is a really big deal on TikTok. A lot of people love it. I like it myself. When I first discovered it, when I first heard it, I thought, you know, I had a, a negative opinion about it. And I, it just, I just couldn't imagine what it was. But I was very intrigued because I knew it was something different. And it really affected my mind. And I was surprised. So then I read about it. I researched it and read about it. And it affects people that are more sensitive more profoundly. And I think that's why so many people like it that watch it they're sensitive and it helps put them to sleep it's really very fascinating i think but it's become so popular on tiktok 10 13 monday oh well yeah where i am it is too um <laughs> yes i'm back i haven't it's been at least two weeks since i've gone live and I've had some a lot going on. Uh, the only exciting thing is me. You know, they had a TikTok had a concert series this past weekend. I bet you guys all probably saw some of it anyway. I saw some of it. I was I could not believe some of the people they had. They were it was very impressive and very well done. TikTok did a great job on their live music it was the whole weekend like 48 hours of of live famous singers and bands etc so it was fun I, I watched it a little bit David from Rancho Quamanga says hi. Hi, David. How are you? Rancho Guacamanga. I want to say guacamole for some reason. <laughs> are you in front of a boat, small guy, David? I tried to look at your picture, but it can't enlarge that much. <clears throat> Thank you for the kind words. 
I'm eating. No. Oh. Well, that was hard for me to see it. Which I couldn't really tell. Thank you. You know what I think is funny? Nobody's saying anything, but that doesn't stop my mind from racing and thinking of all kinds of things. I think it's funny how, I don't know, probably other people wouldn't think it was funny, but it is to me. I think it's funny how I'm from Indiana. I was born, born in Indiana. Sorry, I'm trying to eat. But I think it's funny. Not funny, haha, -ha, but funny, like, ironic, maybe, or, anyway, every time I get on, go on a live, I watch other people that are live, like men or women, the majority of the audience, if the person that goes live, say it's female, it's always men that watch her, no matter what the topic is. Now, that's a generalization, of course. A gross generalization but for the most part it's true I'm friends with a male uh, musician on TikTok, and he goes live every night and the majority of his followers that comment in his lives are female yet everyone can enjoy classical music like that so I guess it's just natural for people to want to always be or not always but to seek the opposite sex just to look at it's just I guess more fun. I don't know. Human nature. Thank you. Oh, that's nice, Benjamin. <laughs> Some of the strange remarks. Benjamin and Andrew. You guys need to get to know each other. Look at your comments, Benjamin and Andrew. Agreed, uh, human nurture. Yes. Nature versus nurture. I always like to talk about that. Nature versus nurture. <clears throat> Do you guys know what nature versus nurture is? And what, what all it means? My true nature. Okay, Google. Stop. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm hoarse. Eating pistachio nuts and my voice is <clears throat> not very clear. But... Hi there, how are you from Florida? Oh, I can't see. I'm trying to pretend I don't have to watch wear glasses. You agree and watch women and women watch. It's true. And nurture. Some people don't get that nurturing nurturing though. What? What about Google stock? I don't own I don't own Google stock. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh I, I'm not really nervous. I just I think I feel kind of rushed, but I, I'm not nervous. Um, I did go to a major, major university, but if I said what it was, you would know where I am exactly, and I really don't want to... I come from a very academic family. I'm, I'm the underachiever. Everyone in my family is an MD or a PhD. I'm the only one that just has a bachelor, so I'm an underachiever, I guess, in that regard. Uh... Don't be rushed. You seem like you're very comfortable talking to everybody. What? Well, I'm rushed for internal reasons that I'm, I'm not going to talk about. Nurturers. Boy, you know what? You're interesting to say that, uh, Bourbon. Because I would love to have a debate with you about that. I love to debate just for fun. I don't do it to try to give anybody a hard time. But that's how I can learn new concepts and ideas with someone else to hear their opinion and see if they can actually convince me if there's some new knowledge or information that I didn't have that they could give me. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, another little chick that left the man behind. I don't know what that means. I'm not a lesbian. My voice is hoarse. Yes. Big deal. Um, 
oh, it was the nature versus nurture. You said something. Nature is able to overcome nurture most of the time. I disagree with that. Uh, I am a sp <laughs> I am a little spark plug. You, I must know you. You're right. No one can give you no new knowledge. No, they can't give you new knowledge. But there might be concepts that you're unfamiliar with. Um, you can gain knowledge in many ways. But as far as the long COVID, thank you for asking. Long COVID is when you have COVID symptoms af long after someone's trying to go live with me. Symptoms long after you've gotten over COVID. And I, uh, I didn't know any of this just a, just a few months ago. This has all been a learning process. I had never even heard of long COVID. I thought, what the heck is that? Who's heard of that? Well, apparently a lot of people know what it is and they know in the medical community what it is especially, but some people remain, actually I read 60% of people still have COVID symptoms months after they've gotten over COVID and they come and go and they can be very different. Every person, you know, they always say, everybody's different. Well, it's true. My COVID symptoms are long-term, long COVID symptoms are different from other people. One of the weirdest symptoms that I have is that I always think that I smell cigarettes and I don't smoke and I'm not around smoke, yet it's in my mind. And I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of reading, trying to help myself because Doctors don't know. They don't know what to do. The long COVID program where I am, major city, is actually full. I was, I didn't like finding that out. It's actually full. So I'm reading as much as I can to try to figure out how I can help myself. One of them is to reset my olfactory senses by smelling essential oils. Sounds, read about it. I didn't make it up. It works. It's actually helping me not smell, have that sensation. I'm trying to get rid of this right there. It helps me not have the sensation that I smell cigarettes all the time. So if this helps anybody, essential oils can help you regain your, I guess, correct sense of smell. I don't know how to say it. Just sense of smell. Yes, I went to college. So I hope I answered your question about long COVID. I like to debate, too. I don't let them get to me, the haters. I don't let haters commit. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> you're so, you're, Brandon, I'm going to give you another chance. You're reading a lot of things into me that you don't know. You, you have no idea what I'm like. Um, no, it's not from the jab. No, I don't smoke. I never have. I'm hoarse. Can I? Uh, well, yeah, I think you could change your thinking through debate. I think debate is, hey, I'll make a new logo. Debate is great. <sighs> I know this stuff. I think debating is good for people, especially as they're growing up. It's good for them to learn how to advocate themselves and assert themselves and how to be able to quickly process and think of things to say in debate. It's very important in life. Uh, okay. I even gave you another chance. Bye. What a weirdo. Okay. Uh, I've known about long COVID for a long time. We deal with it. I'm in cattle. Yes, you're talking about coronavirus that was in the dogs, the canine species originally starting in the 60s that COVID has mutated from over all of these decades. It's the same virus that was around in the 60s that affected only dogs. I had a dog die from it many decades ago or many years ago. Um, good Lord, you have a lot of baggage. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was reading some of these remarks and they're ridiculous. God. 
uh, debate is different from discussion. And what you're saying is I have these factual issues. Well, I hope you follow me. I'd love to talk to you. I love... Stop going retro. I don't know what you what you mean by that. I am going forward. You know, it's so funny to me. I know myself very well. And then I see people like you guys see my wife and you think that you just know everything about me based on this tiny, tiny, tiny snippet of time. And you make all these gross assumptions 99.999% of them are false. I don't make any assumptions about people when I first meet them or see them. It's a process to figure out, eh, I don't I'm not, why am I even saying that? Uh, stop talking history. Uh, brother. Damn. Land. Landon, I like that name, Landon. Does anybody remember Michael Landon from, and that's really dating myself, Little House on the Prairie, remember? Oh, he was so good looking, oh my gosh. He had what, what I think is so attractive is the dark hair and the light colored eyes. You know, it's so, so, uh, such a contrast. I always, my whole life, I always liked guys that had, it was always the same, dark hair, and light eyes, just, and then I like olive skin too, or tan, and, but Michael Landon, my gosh, he was so, he was so masculine, I guess that's what I really, I mean, I was a kid, and I was attracted to, I mean, and for me to remember that all these years later, he really made an impression on me. Uh, Highway to Heaven, Laura Ingalls, whatever happened to her? Yes, I, Tell you want Tom, you want Tom reach, oh, to reach people. I do want to reach people. Yeah, I just, I, I actually, no, double D, but not that it matters. I actually, uh, you know, my intentions are truly to help people and inspire people. I'm sincere and, and I know that about myself. But then, then I see these comments, and in my mind, I think, wait, don't they know that I'm actually trying to help people? Why would they say all these negative things when I'm giving my time and energy for free? I get nothing, and then people say rude things. So that's how I think. It just amazes me. Uh, I say I know what I, I'm like because it took me... I think I was immature for my age for a long time. I really do. I think it took me longer to, to mature than most people. That's just what I think. Whether or not it's true, who knows. But it's been a hell of a journey is all I can say to figure myself out. I'm pretty, pretty complicated. It's not always so easy to understand yourself. Thank you for sharing the live. Please... Tap the screen, please tap the screen and share. I heard somebody the other day say, what was it? Tap and now it rhymed. It was, and I thought, can I make myself say that to people? It sounds so fake. And then I don't even remember what it was now, but it was something like, it wasn't tap and share because that's so tap and I don't remember. But please share this live and tap the screen. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> it takes time to mature the best wine. It's true. My night's pretty boring. He, my diet is one of the best ways. Now I'm talking about, this is some, I used to be, I was in the 220s, 230s for many, many years. 250 is when I stop weighing myself and probably is about my top weight. But I don't have a special diet. I eat less than I used to. And I try to go to bed hungry. And I certainly don't go to bed full. But that was something that I did for the first year 
when I lost the majority of my weight, I went to bed hungry every single night, and that's rough. I don't, if you don't have to, I don't recommend it, but I had so much weight to lose. There was no choice. And <laughs> yes, I'm very, I'm very much an introvert and I'm very introspective. And when I think of my thoughts, I do, I look up and I've seen videos of myself and I look up and I see my eyes moving and what I'm doing is reading the images in my own mind. I guess other people don't do that as much. I don't know. That's just how I have always been. You do discover things about yourself when you do things like this, like the eyes. <sighs> but I remember many conversations that I've had with people. And I remember sitting in a booth in a restaurant. And I know my eyes were doing, I was talking to someone. And they thought, the person that I was with, that it was a date actually. And he thought that. I was looking at people behind him the whole time. <laughs> in reality, I was looking in my own mind and I was looking in my mind talking. I wasn't looking at the person behind him like he thought. It was funny to me. And people still, to this day, will look behind them when I'm talking. <laughs> because I shouldn't laugh, but to me, that's normal to be like that. So how's everybody doing tonight? Here's my great excitement. My great excitement tonight is I'm giving myself a break from all of my supplements. I thought tonight I'm not going to take all those supplements. I'm sick of it. So that I'm being very rebellious by not taking, you know, I'm mocking myself. I'm probably hard to understand for other people. I'm mocking myself. Um, that's my big excitement right now is not taking all my supplements and giving myself permission. I lead a very, very, very disciplined life. And in order for me to keep all of the weight off that I lost all these years, I've had to implement a lot of things, put things in place to make me more likely to stick to an eating plan that's not outrageous and stick to exercise. And there are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself that I've taught myself. I had COVID basically since March. I had it, I got it for the first time in March of this year and didn't know I had it. I actually collapsed on my floor in my bedroom. I've never collapsed from anything ever in my entire life. I've never collapsed. I found it very frightening that I did that. And I don't understand why I did, but I literally couldn't stand anymore and just fell to the ground. I was there for quite a while, but, and then I had a high fever for three days. But anyway, it took me two and a half months to get over it. I was fine for about two or three weeks and then I got it again in June. And I've never gotten completely over it. That's one of the reasons that I'm so hoarse. Thank you for the compliment. Yes, it's... <laughs> Guys. So, I've learned, I've had, I didn't have to learn. I chose to learn. Knowledge is power. I know you guys have all heard that, but it's so true. And it's especially true with things like, boy, that's a big hot topic if I bring that up because there's so much debate about it. But I just know what I've lived through and I've definitely lived through COVID. No, it didn't affect, I don't think it affected my hair and skin. It, I don't think it did. I take a lot of supplements for my hair and skin I don't think it did at all, but, uh, hi, Maylee, how are you? 
It's good to see you. Now, it didn't affect my hair and nails. My, my, uh, popping my ears. My symptoms now are debilitating fatigue. And I took caffeine so I could do this live and caffeine today. My, my doctor actually told me to take caffeine. They don't know what to do. Pretty, kind of, not kind of, it's frightening. Anyway, uh, oh, that's terrible. I read that five times. I couldn't believe you just said that, Maylee. What's wrong? What is going on? That's terrible. Yes, experience is definitely knowledge. Um, yeah, and that's something that I always did appreciate. I always knew when I was much younger. I always, not always, but frequently admired people that were older and experienced and had lived through so much. And even now, I would say my best friend, I'm not going to say her name, but she's 90. And she has so much wisdom. She's been through so much. And I think so highly of her and her thoughts. There's a lot to be said for wisdom. Uh, I think everybody's doing fine. How are you, Jonathan? I think it's the injections. Really? That's... I never... I had the... <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I love you, Tom. <laughs> I had one of the injections in April of last year. I had the Johnson & Johnson, just the one, and had very minor side effects. And then I didn't have uh, one this year. And then that's what happened. So I'm honest about it. That's for sure. I'm honest about pretty much everything. Everything, actually. My guessing... Oh, well, yes, I am 35. God. You're very sweet. <laughs> I'm drinking lemonade with electrolytes with tart cherry juice added. Just a splash of tart cherry juice. What kind of work did I get done? I've had a brachioplasty which is removal of the excess skin on both arms. I had, I hear my son coming. Just a second. Let me, I'm gonna move this. Sit down, closed out of my own kitchen. Uh, anyway, I was, <laughs> yeah, my 17 year old, what am I saying? He's 18 now. Anyway, I've, I had, uh, I've had many, many, many surgeries. I've had my gallbladder removed, my appendix removed. I had a lap band. You can see the scar, maybe. And I had the lap band removed because it changed. It didn't change my brain. I never lost weight with it or very little. And I sure couldn't maintain it. Um, I have... Uh, I mean, what are you asking specifically? Thank you. what you guys can see. Uh, that's, I don't know if that's luck or what. What do you mean? That sounds interesting, but I don't know what you mean. Compare what, Tom? 
Oh, I don't like comparison. You mean surgeries? I doubt if you could outdo me. I've had three C sections and lap band. I know I'm not the only one. It's kind of a weird thing to say. How about exercise? I don't work out every day. I try to work out between five or six days a week since I've had COVID. I am not able to do that. I've had to really modify and lighten up everything, but I at least go for a walk pretty much every day, at the very least, a good 30. 45 minute walk at the very least. That's, you know, why people don't realize how good just walking is for them. It really, it does more for you than you would imagine. And when I read about it just recently, I was very surprised by how much just walking can do for a person. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm sorry I didn't see you, Tony. I'm doing well. How are you? My diet. I don't like the word diet, but I'm not perfect, but I, uh, my diet is, I try to eat as much salmon and sardines as I can stomach. And I try to eat avocado every day. I try to make sure I get cruciferous vegetables at least a couple times a week. You should eat them a lot more than that, but I don't like them. And I, I've i never liked cruciferous vegetables. I guess the one that I like the most is cauliflower, but I don't even really like cauliflower that much. And then people say, we'll put melted cheese on it and butter. Well, then it's fattening. So I've had to, you're talking about a, a real perfectionist. That's me. And that's not a good quality. It Everything had to be perfect. You know, my food had to be perfect, perfect. I had to count the calories perfect. No, it doesn't work like that. No one is perfect. No one will do things perfectly. There's no perfect. The 80-20 rule, thank you. The 80-20 rule applies to just about everything in life. As long as you do what you want to get accomplished, at least 80% of the time, and the 20% of the time you don't, you should be fairly successful. And that's a, a very common rule, but it's true. I try to behave, I, you know, I call it that, as well as I can with food the vast majority of the time, but boy, I am not perfect. I have slip ups still, but what's different is what I do after the slip ups that I have with food. That's what's different. That's why I was able to lose weight and keep it off. I didn't do the same things that I used to do for many, many years when I binged or ate compulsively because I was upset or someone looked at me sideways and it hurt my feelings. And so then I had to push down those feelings with food and I've been through it all with food. Just try to behave, call it whatever you want, the majority of the time and you should be fine. There's no one diet or so-called diet or lifestyle eating plan that fits everyone. You have to figure out what you can live with and what you like. Because what I like and can live with is definitely not what you like. <laughs> Thank you, small guy. If I said that right. From Rome. I love Rome. I went there in 2019. My nose is stopped up for your potassium daily and one gram of avocado is about a thousand grams. Well, Charlie, you're a smart guy. Really smart. 
I think I've seen you before. Your picture. That's that's really. I'm glad you said that. I don't think about potassium, but I should because my mom has heart problems and potassium becomes really important when you get older. And I've never knew how important. So I'm trying to learn all these things now so that they're second nature when I get older. Um, you know, I don't know what the daily, I wonder what the daily requirement is for potassium. It must be pretty low. But I think, I think avocados do have just about as much as bananas. You know, everybody says, well, eat bananas if you want more potassium in your diet. But I think that uh, avocados are pretty close to bananas. Hi, Michael. How are you? What are you guys up to tonight? I had to move into... I was looking at some pictures. I had to move into the ping pong room. <laughs> Nobody said a word. <laughs> Hi, Dominic. How are you? For heart function. Is that the same person that said that? Yes. And you know, uh, is it Aquintex? Do you remember when those uh, chocolate, there was a, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of controversy because people were getting too much calcium and it was actually causing, what was it that it did to people's hearts? I can't remember what it was. But it was very serious, and it made me stop taking so many calcium supplements. I was taking, of course, the ones that are tasty, that are chocolate, and but they're not too good. They're good enough that they're palatable, but they're not good enough that I'd want to binge on them. But I stopped taking them because I read about the, there was a lot of controversy about the too much calcium affecting heart function, how Affected the heart, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at you guys. Hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia can't cause cardiac arrhythmia and palpitations. But what, what was that study that was so well known that the uh, calcium excess, I know it's its out there, that information. All I have to do is get on Google. Uh, the excessive, was it D3 or calcium that I'm thinking of? It was one of those. And anyway, I mean, most people don't have the problem of having too much. They don't get enough. Can, not, can't. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. It Tampa here. Come see me from this. Oh, that's terrible. And my phone's gonna die soon. Well, I hope you do okay in the hurricane. That's very frightening. Death definitely was calcium. Some had to take calcium channel blockers because they had too much calcium. Thank you for contributing that. I appreciate it. I love detox. What? Patches on the bottom of the feet while you sleep removes. Oh, come on. I hope that wasn't the same person that said that after I thought so highly of you. <sighs> um, TikTok chat is an awful place to discuss medical. You're right. Of course it is. You're right. But it's nice to talk to somebody intelligent for one. I mean, intelligent. I just followed you. I have to be careful. I'm too 
Yeah. I'm in the United States of America. I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> I know. I should. I shouldn't have said that. It's. Uh, I I I do. That probably is my favorite topic: is medical issues. That's not probable. Well, medical longevity, anti-aging, and of course, weight loss. I love anything that has to do with achieving optimal health and longevity. If it achieves, it helps you have a higher quality of life. I'm interested in it. Count me in. That That's what my whole, that really summarizes my interests right there. The spin, I don't know what I look like in the back. And when I whisper, I know you can't hear me, right? And I'm just playing with you guys. Can I help with what? The hurricane? Chicago. Good seeing you too. Is that actually... Oh, I thought it was a woman. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm sorry. That's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. I, wait, did you... Is that a joke? No, that's not a joke. Wow. Hi, Mississippi. How are you? No, I don't think I can do the splits. I'm going to try, though. Not right now. But... Now that you said that, I haven't thought about, thank you for the rose. I haven't thought about doing the splits in a while. I'll try it later. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I, <laughs> what the? I'm doing well. You're in Ireland. Oh, wow. I would love to go there. If I found a man that was one inch tall, what would I do? Well, I would try to protect him from being smashed or stepped on. <laughs> I mean, what a question. That's a great, highly creative question. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Robin. Oh, you mean like a margarita? I didn't even think, I didn't even realize that's what you meant. I don't really drink, but I mean, I guess I drink maybe six times a year, maybe. I mean, not very much at all. I just, I've never cared about alcohol. What I care about is food, but I had to temper that incredible love for food that I have. Oh. Thank you for all the nice words. It's very nice, you guys. I lost 42 to donate my kidney now that it was over. Oh. Wow. I don't know what to even say to someone that did something so generous, Aquintax. You should be I mean, I wish I could, there was some kind of something that someone could do to pay you back. What you did is incredible. You should, I wish I could do something for your generosity, for the person that you helped. But I don't know what I would do. Um, uh, well, thank you. Did you say, oh, I thought it said 260. I thought, oh, is that the new thing, a 260? I'm being funny. I don't know what I look like. I don't really care. I'm fine. How are you? I don't know how to get there. 
to get where? Thank you. You know, what's amazing to me is that there are so many people in the fitness industry, so many. It's pretty saturated, actually. But yet, very few have ever had massive weight problems like me. Very few have all of the issues I've had to deal with my entire life. And very few are 56 like me. And I say that because there's this one female on TikTok that works out every morning. Every morning she works out and she's very devoted and she's great. But she's like 21 or 22. And yes, she's learned how to lift weights. She's learned all about weightlifting. But she's only 22. Wow, thank you. Thank you. So what I'm saying is, I'm not saying there's something wrong with her. She's beautiful. I think she's a really sweet girl. She's a girl to me. But she's only 22. And she's never been overweight or obese. There's a lot to be said for experience. For someone like me that's lived through massive, being massive, made morbidly obese. I lived through it for decades. And there's no comparison between me and this woman, girl that I'm thinking of that's 22. No comparison between us. None. And I'm not saying I'm better. But what I'm saying is, it's easy, much easier to be in great shape and condition when you're only 22. That's really not that difficult. But when you're 56 and you have multiple disabilities, I have some serious physical, it's all like um, not internal, but like I have a partially deformed foot and I have a weird mechanical issues is what I'm trying to say, like a spinal fusion. And there's a lot of things that I can't do that I used to do. When I was 22, I was fat, very fat, but I could sure do just about everything that I, you know, a lot of things I can't do now. I can't, I used to squat, and I guess, I don't know if it was 150. It was a lot to me. I'm petite. I have small bones. So it was a lot of weight for me. Well, thank you for comp thank you for the compliments. Thank you. You're 59. I am 56. Let's see. I need a reason to lose more weight for myself, not someone else. Okay, so you want to lose about 44 pounds. Well, that is an excellent question. That's an hi hi there. You, I tried many times to lose weight and it wasn't, and I tried to lose it for the wrong reasons. I was trying to lose it for my husband at the time who was, who told me repeatedly how ugly and gross I was and he wasn't attracted to me. And I remember he said, I thought I got a, a brand new car and instead I got a lemon or something, he compared me to a car and said I was a lemon after we got married. And it hurt me tremendously. And I tried so hard to lose weight, but it was for him. And I didn't realize, I mean, I wanted to lose weight too, but I really was doing it for my spouse. And I have some real, a lot of stories about that, but in the end, I didn't, I couldn't lose it. I couldn't lose it and I couldn't maintain it. It wasn't until I finally realized that I had to do it for myself because I loved myself because I want to live and have the best quality of life that I can. And I can't if I wear a size 26. I couldn't do it at a size 26. My body, my bones are way too, I have very small bones. I couldn't weigh 250 or 230 or I remember it was such a big deal for me just to get down to 200. 
I was so, I couldn't believe it when I remember seeing the scale or the, I was doing Jenny Craig at the time. The first time I got that low was in college. And I remember looking at the chart and it's saying 199 and I couldn't believe it. That took, that was a Herculean effort for me, but I couldn't maintain it. It has to be for yourself. I went on this long uh, answer tangent. You can't lose weight for other people. It has to be for you. You have to find reasons to motivate yourself, whether it's, it has to be what makes you happy. What, what is it that would motivate you? Only you really know. Only you know. But for me, it was so that I wouldn't die. Pretty big deal. I had fatty liver disease. I wore a brace that went from under my knee all the way to the end of my foot. It was a solid AF, they call them AFO. And I can't remember what it even, what AFO stands for. But if you can look it up, I'm telling the truth. It was a solid AFO brace. And it was because I couldn't walk. Because this foot was, I, when I was born, it was partially clubbed. My mom and dad didn't have it fixed the way they should have. And then after I had my second son, my foot collapsed even more. Meaning I was walking on my ankle. And I couldn't walk. So the brace held, it kind of like held my leg up so that I could walk. But it was like like I had a peg leg and I had to wear shoes that were two sizes too big for me so that this horrible, I hated that thing, so that that brace could fit into my shoe. My t I mean, it, it makes me upset just thinking about all that. It was very, I couldn't even take my son's trick-or-treating because I was so out of breath and I couldn't walk that far. What I'm trying to say for someone like me to have been in such a bad situation with so many issues with food, if I can lose weight and keep it off, then pretty much anyone can. You just have to want to. It's really not that complicated. People make it more complicated than it really is for various reasons. If they're trying to sell you something, then make it more complicated so that you keep